Arrays are one of the most fundamental building blocks of any program, and in this video, I'm going to cover all the basics you need to know about arrays in JavaScript. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, we're going to talk all about arrays. Now, in JavaScript, it's really easy to create a variable that just has a value like a number or it's going to have a string or so on. But an array is essentially when you create a variable that has a list of values inside of it. If you think you have a shopping list that you have a bunch of things on, like you need to buy chicken and pork and rice, those are going to be three items all on your shopping list. Well, an array allows you to represent a list of items inside of JavaScript. So let's create an array. We're just going to call it A. And to create an array in JavaScript, all you do is you open and close it with square brackets. Now, this square bracket key is the same key as the curly bracket key. You just don't click shift when you create it. And here you go. You got your empty square brackets. And if we save, we have an empty array. If I log this out, you can see over here we have an empty array. It has nothing inside of it. And when we expand it, you can see the length of this array is zero. So in order to actually add elements to an array, what we want to do is we can specify them in between the curly or in between the square brackets. So we just put a value, for example, a was what we're going to put inside of here. And then to put the next value, you put a comma and then the next value. So our next value is going to be B and C. And then we're going to do finally D. So we have four elements in this array. And you'll notice the important thing is we have an element, doesn't matter what it is, then a comma. And then we have another element and then we have a comma and then an element and a comma. So every element must have a comma separating it. When I click save, you're going to see it's auto formatting for me and it's putting a space after the comma. This is just standard ways that you would write this in JavaScript. You don't need the space, but the space is just there to make it a little bit easier to read. Now, if you look on the right side of our screen, we have four elements, A, B, C, and D. As you can see, they're listed here. The element zero is A, element one is B, two is C, and three is D. And that's something really important to note about arrays. In JavaScript and pretty much every programming language out there, arrays start at zero. So the first element in array is considered at index zero, while the second element is index one. So it's kind of difficult when you're first dealing with arrays to realize that the numbering system in arrays starts at zero, even though you're probably used to a number system that starts at one. So that's a really important thing to remember. Now this numbering system is really important because that's actually how you access individual elements inside of an array. So if you want to access an individual element in an array, what you do is you take your array, which we called A, and you follow it up by square brackets. And inside of those square brackets, what you do is you put the index that you want to get. So if we want to get the first element, we know that that is index zero since we start our counting at zero. So we put a zero inside here, click save, and we get A being printed out. We want the second element, that's index one. So we put one and so on. Get the third element with index two and the fourth element with index three. If we get an element that doesn't exist, for example, index four, we don't have five elements, you'll notice it just prints out undefined. So if you try to access an element that doesn't exist, it just always prints out undefined. Also, if you want to get the length of an array, you just say a.length, and that's going to give you the length. So our array has four elements, so our length is four. Now, if you want to add elements to an array after it's created, so we created our element here, a, which has four elements, and let's say we want to add e to the end of that. We can say a.push, and we can pass anything to this, for example, e. And now what that's going to do is it's going to add e to the end of our array. So when we save, you can see our array has five elements and e is added to the end. We can also push in something else, like we could push a number, for example. And you can see that that number gets added on after the e element. So it's going to be added to the end of our array. Every time you call push, it's just adding the element to the end of the array. And the important thing about this dot push and arrays in general is that you can add any different types of elements. You can have strings, you can have numbers, you can have whatever you want inside of your array. It does not matter. Now, another important thing to note is you can actually have arrays inside of other arrays. Let's say I push a new array into here, which is just going to have the values one and two. So you can see what I've done here is I've created a new array with these square brackets and I put the value one and two in that array and I'm pushing that into my first array. Now, when I save here, you can see we get A, B, C, D, and then we element four here, this index four is another array that has the values of one and two. This is something called a nested array. So if we change A here and we make it a nested array that has values A, and B, and we're going to give it another array with one and two inside of it. So when I save, you can see here, we have our square brackets that wrap our entire array. And then we have a new set of square brackets for our first array, which contains A and B, and another set of square brackets for one and two. And when I save, you can see we get an array of arrays. Our array has two values inside of it, and those themselves are both arrays. Dealing with nested arrays is something that's pretty common inside of JavaScript, so it's important to understand how you access elements. Let's say I wanted to get B here from my array. Well, that's my first element in array A, so I say A of zero. That's going to give me this array AB. As you can see, we get the array AB. Now I want to get the second element from this, so I'm going to say I want to get the second element of that. 
So a of zero, that's giving me the array a, b. And then if I get the second element of that by saying a of zero of one, that's going to get me the second element here, which is inside of that array, which is the first element right here. Now when I save, you can see it prints out b. So essentially the way nested arrays work is you just say, hey, a of zero is going to return to me this array. And when I get that array, I'm going to get the first element, or I'm sorry, the second element at index one from it. You can also change the values in an array. For example, I can say a of zero is going to be equal to one. And now when I print out a, and we look here, you can see that first element has been changed to one. I overwrote that element. So that's something that you can do inside of arrays. You can add elements, you can overwrite elements. And you'll also know if, if I just come in here and I say a dot, you'll notice all of these are different methods that I can do on my array. You can see that there are tons of different array methods out there. Lots of them you're really not going to use, but some of them are really important. For example, for each and map are array methods that you're going to use all the time. And if you actually want to go a step further and really master all of those different array methods, I'm going to have a full video on that linked right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.